Hi people, welcome to The Run Test, it's Kieran here and in this video we're bringing you a multi-tester take on the new Garmin Fenix 7 Pro. We've been busy testing this for a month now and we're ready to reveal what we like, what we don't and to help you decide if this is the watch for you. So let's start with what's new. There are now more than 30 different Fenix 7 watches and it's getting pretty confusing. The 7 Pro models join the 7 series as sort of stopgap stepping stone. They're not quite a Fenix 8 but rather offer smaller incremental improvements over the existing Series 7 options. So in many ways, this is a Phoenix 7 build materials, looks, touchscreen, button controls, all very familiar, but there are some new bells and whistles. The Phoenix 7 Pro range offers a choice of case sizes, including 42, 47, and 51 mils. And there are MIP LCD touchscreens in 1.2, 1.3, and 1.4 inches, depending on whether you go small, regular, or X. There's also the option for more durable sapphire glass and titanium models. Now, all models of the 7 Pro also have Garmin's best-in-class multi-band GPS, but the cut to the chase summary for what's new on the Phoenix 7 Pro boils down to this. New screen, new sensors, and a smattering of new features. Starting with the screen, there's a new memory and pixel MIP display that's supposed to leach less juice and improve legibility in indoor light. Sensor-wise, there's a new Elevate Generation 5 optical heart rate sensor with a new LED array and a new algorithm to turn the inputs into hopefully more accurate outputs. The big new features include a new hill score that tells you how good you are at running up lumps. There are two readouts here. Hill Endurance measures performance over gradual ascents. Hill Strength measures efforts on shorter, steeper climbs. Mashing those two up creates your hill score as a number from 0 to 100. Then there's endurance score. Now this benchmarks your ability to sustain longer efforts across all different sports. It's displayed as a number along with a progress chart and with info on which sports contributed to the score, plus some very basic tips on how to improve it. Navigation wise, the Phoenix 7 Pro is everything the Phoenix 7 offers, but maps now also feature weather map overlay so you can see upcoming weather conditions. Now all of these features will become available on other Garmin watches soon, so they're not exclusive to the Phoenix 7 Pro line. Battery life is the same as it was in the Phoenix 7. Here's a chart on screen now if you want to get into that detail. But we're talking 15 to 90 hours runtime on the 7 Pro S, depending on your settings, 57 to 136 on the 7 Pro, and 89 to 213 hours GPS on the 7X Pro. And all Phoenix 7 Pro models come with solar charging that boosts those numbers further in the right light conditions. Other final things to note, all Phoenix 7 Pro options now come with a built-in flashlight, and they all now have increased storage to 32 gigabytes. Prices start from just shy of £750 or $800. For the comparison, the Phoenix 7 starts at £560, the Epix Pro starts at £830, the Apple Watch Ultra will cost you £849, the Chorus Vertex 2 comes in at £599. Phoenix 7 Pro. I'll start with my likes. I like the new sensor. I think it is I think it is a little bit more accurate. I have used this with a chest strap for running and a little bit of kind of hit workout and I'd say that the reading on the chest strap is similar to the watch. It's not it's not massive, it's not huge. I've never had a problem with the V4 sensor, you know, I've never gone out for a run and thought, wow, that felt really easy, but then the heart rate sensor is telling me I'm going harder. Do you know what I mean? I've never had a problem with the V4 sensor. But it is a new sensor, it is worth mentioning, and it's probably the main difference really from the Phoenix 7 line, so it's worth talking about. I haven't called it the V5 sensor, I'm not sure if it is the V5 sensor, if everyone else says it is, then it is, but um, I haven't seen any Garmin call it, call it the V5 sensor anywhere. They have said it's got twice as many LEDs as the V4 sensor, so it is, it is going to be more accurate. Next up, we're all gonna say this, aren't we? It's a flashlight. I do think it's a cool feature. I think for me, running on my own in the winter, I will use this a lot because I like I like to be seen. I like knowing that cars can see me. And I think I've used it a lot just, do you mean, every day it's handy. It's just like an, in, the, in the night when you get up and you don't wanna stub your toe. It's a handy thing to have. And I'm really pleased that they've rolled it out into the smaller watches because as, someone with quite small wrists, I would never want a mass, the, something as big as the 7X on my wrist. So I'm really glad Garmin have rolled that out. I do like that feature. And then the next thing I think I'd say is the battery life. This has got the same, it's got the ability to, it's got the red ring, so we know it's solar charging and it lasts 14 days in smartwatch mode, 46 hours in GPS mode. I've probably been testing this for two weeks and I've only had to charge it once. So it has got a good, a decent battery life. It's got the battery life we know and love from the Phoenix range, and it's not to be sniffed at. I think we all bang on about these AMOLED screens. This doesn't have the AMOLED screen, and I think when you 
when you do look at it, it's still, I mean, it's, it's no, by no means dull, but obviously we know with this screen, you're getting more battery life. So I think if battery life is really imperative to you, you won't be disappointed with the 7 Pro. First of my likes then is the battery life. This is always high up my list of priorities. And though this is unchanged from the Phoenix 7 and it's not as good as my much beloved Garmin Enduro 2, the battery life for the Phoenix 7 Pro is excellent. In my tests, the overnight battery burn was around 1%. That's great, no crazy leakage here. A two hour run in max accuracy burned about 11%. A nine hour run in normal power mode at the Comrades Marathon burned 27%. That compares to the Enduro 2 burning just 14%, but the Apple Watch torched 65%. So again, a strong performance from the Phoenix 7 Pro here. Then a week's general use just burned about 50% with five hours GPS training. So in my estimations, you're probably charging this every two weeks, which I think is pretty strong. Second up, accuracy. In my test, both the GPS and heart rate accuracy was generally solid, though real-time pace was still a little bit skittish. I'm not sure I found the new optical sensor noticeably more reliable though than the Phoenix 7 and that's one of the big selling points here. It's certainly not enough for me to upgrade if you already own a Phoenix 7. Another feature I really like is ultra run mode. It isn't unique to the Phoenix 7 Pro, but it's a feature I really like on all of Garmin's watches. You can choose to have an automatic rest timer that flicks on in ultra run mode, and this will show you how long you dawdle at aid stations without having to touch any buttons during ultra runs. Super handy, and the breakdown after the runs is also great. Another highlight for me around Garmin watches, in particular the Phoenix 7 Pro, is customization. Like all of Garmin's watches, the 7 Pro is extremely customizable and importantly, it's really easy to do most of the customization from the watch itself. Now, I'm not too bothered about things like watch faces, I'll leave that for other people, but what I really like is the ability to create power modes for the battery life, tweaking tools and settings to extend that battery life when needed, but I also like the ability to create and store profiles for different runs. I used it, for example, to create a profile for the Comrades Marathon that was specific, focusing on things like elevation stats, heart rate and average pace, and the way that you can now kind of slice and dice your many metric screens really lets you get race specific. So likes for the Phoenix 7 Pro, I start with flashlights for all. Uh, what's not to like about that? Like, I think the flashlight is a good feature in that if you're not using it, it's completely unnoticeable. It's a very unobtrusive thing. And then when you do need it, it's really very handy. I probably use it a lot less than many other people will, but at the same time, I do like it having it available and it's good that it's now available across the range. The big like probably here for the Phoenix is battery life, which is its key selling feature against the Epic. Pro range. Now it's not really changed here on the Phoenix uh, Pro line compared to the standard Phoenix 7 line but it is still very good. So the Phoenix 7X uh, Pro, the larger model, was lasting me three weeks on a charge. It is very sunny here in the UK at the moment but that said I don't think the solar panels actually make very much difference. When I look at the solar intensity stuff on the watch, unless you really are in bright sunlight for a long period with the watch facing the sunlight then you're not going to really reap the benefits of it. So if you're just going to get a bit of sun on your run each day like I do it doesn't make a huge difference but doesn't matter too much because the battery life in general is just very good. I've also been impressed by the new heart rate model on uh, Garmin's new watches, the Phoenix Pro and Epix Pro. Do think it is a step up on what I've used before with optical heart rate monitors. Using this watch for several weeks really was only a few glaring errors it made and it was never long lasting errors, which I think is the key. Like when optical heart rate monitoring can go wrong, you can just read wrong for an entire run or half a run and completely change the profile of that run within your training analysis. When the 7 Pro does go wrong, it's normally only for a short period. Uh, it's the kind of thing, it will still lag behind a chest strap on things like intervals and all that and occasionally miss an interval entirely or jump very high or very low just for a very short period. So I did find the max was often a little bit wrong when doing a track reps, that kind of thing. But overall, it's a pretty reliable optical heart rate monitor. I'm not sure it's gonna win over anyone who's been using a chest strap up until this point to not using a chest strap, which is me. I probably would still use a chest strap with the Phoenix 7 Pro, but if you're someone who does just use optical heart rate monitoring, you're gonna get a better experience with this watch than previous Garmin's, I'd say. And that's even with the very big and heavy Phoenix 7X Pro, which I do find bigger, heavier watches tend to get worse readings on my wrist as a thin-wristed gentleman. Otherwise, I'd say all the pluses are the usual Garmin pluses. The GPS accuracy is top-notch. It's the best multi-band GPS you can get from any brand, I'd say. The maps are obviously amazing, best maps from any brand. Sports tracking and training analysis, top-notch. Good, smart features, so yeah. Those are common pluses to all of Garmin's top watches but it's worth mentioning again that the Phoenix 7X Pro is amazing at all those things. So things I like about the Phoenix 7 Pro, and I'll start with something maybe is a little bit boring, but I think ultimately I think it's a really important thing that the battery life on the Phoenix 7 Pro is still very, very strong. This is probably a reason you're looking at Phoenix, you want that big battery life. I do think you'll get that, that on the Phoenix 7 Pro. 
Okay, so into the things that I like about the Phoenix 7 Pro. I'm gonna start with a slightly boring one, but I think an important one, and that is battery life. And now if you're looking at Phoenix, you ultimately are probably looking at getting that kind of bigger battery life from a watch. And that is what you're gonna get from the Phoenix 7 Pro based on my experience. Very similar to what I experienced on the Phoenix 7. Now I use the 47 millimeter version. I've used a 47 millimeter version of the Phoenix 7. I've used the other sizes, the kind of non-pro models as well. And for me, the battery life is very, very good. You're still gonna see a similar level of uh, kind of drop off when using that top uh, multi-band, multi-frequency positioning mode, but that's kind of what I expected. And the drop off is very similar to what I experienced on the Phoenix 7 in comparison. Um, and then kind of day to day, I think you, you, know, you feasibly can get a couple of weeks out of this watch. The kind of drain over night is very small as well. And then it's really, you know, the Epix is kind of really closing the gap in terms of the level of battery life that you're getting with the kind of AMOLEDs and transfactive display watches like the Phoenix. But ultimately, when you get into those kind of lower GPS battery modes, um, lower kind of GPS tracking modes, and you know, you start to see the bigger gap. And you know, that's really what the Phoenix is about. It's a watch that will last you for a long period of time. And when you kind of drop into those get expedition modes, max GPS battery modes, you see the bigger distance between other watches and also the kind of Garmin Epix Pro as well too. So battery life definitely is a winner for me. It's been very, very solid for me in my testing. And the other thing I'd probably talk about is, and you know, there's a lot of new software features obviously kind of rolling back to the Phoenix 7. I think just in general, the run tracking experience is very strong. As I said, the multi-band support is very good. I still like the kind of training analysis approach that you get on Garmin. I really like the training readiness feature. I think the hill scores and the endurance scores take a leaf out of the training readiness book in terms of presentation and really trying to simplify that process in terms of the information that you're getting. And I kind of like that, whether that information is massively important to me and information that I'm gonna absolutely use on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm not 100% sure, I think the training readiness feature feels like one that I would particularly use more, but it's nice that things are packaged a little bit nice, I think, as well. And I think that's really important when you, these watches can feel very overwhelming if you're new to using a Phoenix watch as well. So having things like training readiness and hill score and endurance scores kind of wrapped up in that kind of package the way they are, I think is, um, a really good thing here and then also lastly i think it's amazing the turnaround for for me but having a flashlight on here i think you know i mean we kind of maybe kind of made a bit of light of it on the phoenix 7x but i think ultimately now they're all rolled out to all sizes in the phoenix pro range i've had it on the 47 millimeter case and i do think it can be useful you know you think about it from an outdoor perspective you are running a lot on your own at night and you need a good source of light this watch does offer that uh you know that kind of the ability to kind of vary how that light works as well. I think the brightness is pretty good as well. I found that the Epix Pro maybe light is a little bit um, brighter, but ultimately it does offer a good source of light. So if that's something you want, you were gutted that it wasn't um, on the other Phoenix uh, models, the Phoenix 7 models, there's only on the 7X, you now have it in a more, I guess, more manageable um, case size compared to the 7X. So yeah, those are the kind of key things that I would pick out that I've really liked about the Phoenix 7 Pro. Probably my main kind of dislike with the Phoenix uh, 7 Pro is that it is very similar to the Phoenix 7, especially with all the software features that have been brought in with this watch, coming back to the older watch. Um, you're gonna get really a similar experience across the board with the Phoenix 7. You lose out on the flashlight on the smaller sizes, the heart rate sensor's not quite as good, but for the most part, it is quite a similar watch. I'm also not massively enthused with the new training analysis features on the uh, Pro lineup. Like, endurance score is nice. Like, it's a, it's a you know, reasonable idea, it's another metric to look at, but I don't think it gives you a lot more than what you already had from things like VO2 Max on Garmin watches. It doesn't feel very different to what there already was on the watches, even though it's a, another useful score, I guess. And then Hill score, I'm not entirely convinced by it yet, <laughs> mainly because I think it's generous with me. Like, I've got a pretty good Hill score rating on the Garmin's. Like, it's not amazing, but it's rated as trained as, a, and I've got a score of like 61, 62, and I just don't do a lot of hill running. Like, I'm mostly a road runner. I do probably rack up around 2,000 meters of elevation over a four-week period according to this watch roughly which is just on undulating trails in my forest and don't specifically train hills very often so I don't know I think it's mostly just based on having a high VO2 max on the watch that my score is anything at all and you know, if I was going to go and do some mountains or something like that I don't really feel very comfortable that I would be a trained hill runner if I was tackling those so not entirely sure by that yet although I do think it could be quite interesting to see if you can try and get that score to go up if you are trying to improve at hills and it might be a nice target to aim for if you're someone who's 
not really getting much from things like VOT Max if you're mainly a big trail runner. The other dislike is that the screen being improved, I've not really noticed. Like it's it's a good screen. It's a memory and pixel screen. It's designed to preserve battery life rather than being exceptionally vivid and vibrant like you get from AMOLED screens like on the Epix Pro. And it's a clear differentiator between the between the watches. You, know, you go for the screen of the Epix or the battery life of the Phoenix. But I know Garmin said they'd improve the screen on the Phoenix 7 Pro line, and I haven't really seen that to be the case. It's fine, it's just it does suffer in comparison to AMOLED displays. I'd also say that I know they've got solar on every single watch because battery is the differentiating feature from the Epix lineup, but I'd have been pretty happy to see a cheaper non-solar option within the Pro range because I probably wouldn't go for the solar watch myself because I'm not in sunny conditions enough to get the benefit of it, and a cheaper option would be a nice way to get that heart rate sensor without having to have the solar panels as well. Onto my dislikes then, and the first I think is the endurance score. I'm really not in love with this new feature. First of all, I'm not really sure what it's actually telling you. I don't really think it's a good rating. And really this is because it lacks context. My endurance score dropped after I ran a two and a half hour half marathon. The week before the Comrades Marathon during my taper, my endurance score also plummeted, dropped right down. Felt very negative about that. I get why it might be happening because I wasn't doing anything. So it thinks that my endurance is dropping off. But I don't believe that my endurance was worse the day before the, oh, the Comrades race than it was seven days prior. In fact, you know, you're peaking, you feel stronger. And then I went and ran the Comrades, a tough 55 mile, very hilly course in sub nine hours. So I'd say that my endurance was pretty good, actually. So even after that race, my score still didn't reach my pre-taper levels. And for me, that is a bit of an issue. I had plenty enough endurance to complete that really tough race, even though Garmin thought maybe I didn't. Now, the second thing is the strap that it ships with. Having used a nylon strap, I found it really hard to go back to the silicone. I know you can swap them out, but there's a couple of reasons why I'm not really a fan of the strap that this ships with the 7 Pro. First, I suffered some really quite severe silicone burn on the first night that I wore it. But I also find that you really have to constantly tighten and loosen the silicone strap when you're running and when you're wearing it just afterwards, you've got to get it really tight for it to not kind of wobble around on the wrist when you're running. And then if you forget to loosen it afterwards, it can get pinchy. That's a bit of a problem. Now, even though the Enduro is a bigger and bulkier watch than the 7 Pro I tested, the nylon strap still makes for a better, more comfortable fit. And I wish this shipped with that strap. Now, my final quibble with the Phoenix 7 Pro is really whether it brings enough upgrades to warrant a new watch. I'm beginning to find Garmin's Phoenix 7 lineup very complicated. And though there's a new heart rate sensor and that improved screen, solar on all the Pro models, I don't really see what the Pro tag really gets you here. Particularly when in my experience, I didn't feel there was actually that much difference between the performance of the optical heart rate sensors either. So my dislikes are that there isn't that much new. I'd have really liked a skin temperature sensor on the Garmin like they've got on the Apple Watch, just because it makes things like period tracking a lot more accurate. It's a bit of a shame it's not on there, but I wonder if it's coming with the Phoenix 8 or the Phoenix 9, and this is just kind of like a little update to shout about their new sensor. That's my thoughts on the matter. Other slight dislike is that there aren't an awful lot of smartwatch features, and I think this is probably where we're getting into the like smartwatch, sportwatch debate. But I think if you're paying, you, you, by all means, this is designed to be worn 24 seven, it will track everything. And you've got things like Garmin Pay, you can mirror your phone notifications. But I think if you compare it to something like an Apple Watch, like the Apple Watch Ultra, it's not like having a phone on your wrist. You can't do an awful lot from the Garmin. And I do think the Garmin Connect apps are a little bit meh. That's a problem with every Garmin. It's not specific to this watch, but I think it's worth mentioning if you're gonna spend this kind of money on a watch, you'll you'll probably I th you don't buy this watch to check your whatsapps on the move do you you buy it because you want to train for a marathon or you want to go for a multi-day adventure or you know not have to charge your watch once you've if you go away for a race but it's worth noting i think that i kind of wish garmin would do some more work on their apps and make this a little bit kind of more like a smartwatch as well when you're wearing it 24 7. Okay, so then we get into the things that I didn't like about the Phoenix 7 Pro. And it's more things that maybe I was a little bit more disappointed about, I think, ultimately. I think the first one being is that Garmin said there's an improved uh, transfective display on here. I really couldn't get a sense of how it was improved on the Phoenix 7 um, watch that I tested previously and on the 7X as well. I just can't see it. I mean, I found visibility, the kind of the level of kind of clarity on the screen generally about the same so maybe there's something else that garmin is not really kind of revealed here but ultimately i haven't really got a sense of where the differences are in terms of that display in terms of the improved display on the phoenix 7 pro i think also in the kind of same wavelength i think the upgraded heart rate sensor now 
it's good that Garmin is trying to improve the reliability of heart rate, particularly for kind of activity. And, you know, obviously optical and wrist-based sensors struggle on that side of things anyway. Now I've had some good sessions with it. I think I did a track session with it, get with the Epix Pro paired to a HRM Pro Plus. And actually it held up pretty well on that front. But then there's also the odd run here and there where the kind of max heart rate readings are a little bit off. Maybe the average reading was a little bit off from a chest strap as well. So I don't think it's entirely solved that issue of kind of wrist-based HR for kind of running and kind of more intense running. Uh, and it's good that it, you know, there has, tro it, you know, Garmin has sought to improve things, but I think ultimately I haven't seen a massive change in terms of what I've seen in the reliability of the data. And I think the other thing as well is that Obviously, you're getting a lot of new software features, or you know, a few software features in here for mapping. Um, obviously, the hill scores and endurance uh, scores as well. A little bit, you know, a few other things as added activities. But I mean, the experience of those things hasn't really, you know, massively differed to what I experienced on the Phoenix Seven and what I've used day to day. As I said, I think the hill score endurance scores are quite interesting. The mapping features are quite interesting as well. I wish the kind of weather overlays was built into the mapping of the tracking experience as well. And also you have to remember these it's difficult to get excited about these things when you know that they're gonna kind of roll back to the Phoenix 7 at some point. We don't know when yet, but they will do at some point. So, you know, kind of lessens the appeal of the 7 Pro. And I think, yeah, in terms of what I was using day to day, I think mainly, um, it was probably looking in those endurance scores and hill scores but outside of that i think you know the other features probably need a little bit of extra work in terms of how they utilize things like split screen and as i said the weather overlays as well so yeah i think for me you know the software the extras that have, have been added here haven't drastically changed my experience compared to what i had with the phoenix 7 model so yeah as i said not things i absolutely hated but more kind of maybe disappointed uh in terms of my time with the phoenix 7 pro Phoenix 7 Pro is a great watch, the best Phoenix in Garmin's range now, but I think it does get a little bit lost in the confusing amount of very, very good watches Garmin has in its high-end category. And I would say that I think the Phoenix 7 is better value uh, across the board, like flashlight's handy on the 7 Pro and the uh, heart rate sensor is a little bit improved, but it's not enough to make me go and buy a Pro over the original Phoenix 7 model with pretty much everything else being identical between the two watches. So yeah, I'd look at getting the older watch just for a bit better value. And talking of value, there's also the case that you could look at buying another Garmin watch from their extensive lineup if you want an even cheaper option. The 400 955 certainly springs to mind. It's got a memory and pixel display. It's a slightly older watch, but still really up to date with all of Garmin's best stuff and just a lot cheaper. It's not got the nice metal bezel, but at the same time, that means it's a lot lighter on the wrist. So that's another good value option if you're looking at the Phoenix 7 Pro. A big choice a lot of people might be making is between the Epix and the uh, Phoenix. It's, it is the choice between AMOLED or battery life. It really does come down to being as simple as that. Although I would say with the 51 millimeter Epix Pro model, you are getting very good battery life, like 10 days with, always on, with the always on screen enabled for me or longer than that if you turn on raise to wake. That changes the choice a little bit, but it is still a case of choosing between battery life of the Phoenix, the screen of the Epix Pro and what is really important to you. Also the Epix is a little bit more expensive. So yeah, that's a straight choice there. I prefer AMOLED myself, but lots of people would rather have the cheaper watch with more battery life. Although if you are interested in AMOLED and would like a uh, cheaper option, then there is the 400 965, which I think is the outstanding pick in Garmin's uh, top end range, just because it is so lightweight. I think it's a good looking watch, uh, even if it is a bit more plasticky than the Phoenix and the Epix. Battery life isn't terrible. Like it lasts me six days, sometimes seven days with the always on screen enabled. Again, you can turn on raised awake if you do want to extend that. And it is cheaper than the models in the Phoenix 7 Pro range. So yeah, that's a really outstanding option, certainly. But again, you're going to trade off a little bit of battery life for that AMOLED screen. Outside of Garmin, there isn't really a very strong competitor, I don't think, for uh, these kind of top-end watches. I did test the Suunto Vertical recently, and I really like that watch. It's got really good maps, it's got very accurate GPS, it's got a nice bright screen for a memory pixel and display, but all the stuff it does is just done a little bit better by things like the Phoenix 7 Pro or Phoenix 7, um, and you know, Suunto has caught up a lot with that watch, but I still think Garmin is the clear and obvious choice if you're shopping in this high-end watch market, partly because the maps are just so much better. They're proper routable maps, and in general, the experience is a little bit better. Garmin is a bit dominant, but that might change in years to come. But for now, I've been looking at Garmin. If I was looking at the 7 Pro, I would get the Phoenix 7 myself, or if you wanted 
you know, brighter, lighter watch, I'd get there. And for an a 965, there's lots of different options, I think, that make it a little bit hard to recommend the 7 Pro itself. So my verdicts. I think if you already have a Phoenix 6, it's probably worth waiting for the Phoenix 8. There's not an awful lot new here, and I don't think you'll really notice the difference. Obviously, this has got a touch screen, the Phoenix 6 hasn't, but I don't think you're going to be blown away. And I think Garmin are releasing watches so quickly that I wonder what's next for the Phoenix line. I do think if you're upgrading from an older Forerunner, it is, I have been really impressed by the Epix Pro. It's got the AMOLED screen and I just think it's a lot brighter. It is, this has really impressed me. I would be tempted to go for the Epix over the Phoenix 7 Pro unless battery life is absolutely imperative to you. Um, that said, if you're on a budget, I would still go for the Forerunner 965. I love it. I think it's it's a fantastic watch and it's probably about two three hundred pounds cheaper than this and you know you'll get obviously it's, it's it looks different to the phoenix line but it is a great watch if you're on a budget but yeah my verdict is a little bit it's a great watch but i was kind of hoping for more and i can't wait to see what's coming next for phoenix verdict then there's no doubt the garmin phoenix 7 pro is a great running and adventure watch in terms of all-round capability, it's as good as it gets for me, aside from the Enduro 2, particularly if you're into ultra runs or more adventurous pursuits. Now, Garmin clearly leads the field for this type of top-end sort of total tracking watch. And this is just more of the same, good nav, good battery life, good heart rate, all of those things. But that's also why I'm overall not sold on potentially paying more for the Pro upgrades, which basically come down to a better screen, a marginally better optical heart rate sensor, if you already own a Phoenix 7, it's really not worth it, I'd say. If you own an Enduro 2 or an Epix, I'd also refrain from buying this one. If you're jumping into the Phoenix market for a first time, then I think it is potentially worth considering, but I still think you can get close to equal performance and better overall value from the cheaper Phoenix 7 models. Okay, so my verdict on the Phoenix 7 Pro is that it's a very good Phoenix watch, as you would expect. The run tracking, the sports tracking, an experience of using a Phoenix, it feels very similar. You're getting good battery life as well. The software feels good on this watch. Um, ultimately, I think for me is th there hasn't been enough to say this is a massively different experience from using the Phoenix 7. And I think obviously those new software features are there, but you can't help thinking when you know that they're gonna come back to the Phoenix 7, what are the reasons you're gonna go for the 7 Pro over the 7? I think things would be you know from a hardware point of view the flashlight and the heart rate sensor and i think the flashlight not everyone's gonna massively care about i think some people will and the fact that it's now on a smaller version of the phoenix is a good thing the heart rate sensor i just haven't seen enough in it to suggest that it's a massive leap over the previous sensors i think it's been good in general but again i would still be using a heart rate monitor chest strap so for me from a point of view it's still a very good Phoenix watch. It's cheaper than the Epix Pro as well. So if you wanted that kind of experience and weren't bothered about the AMOLED display, then this would be the better watch to go for. Um, but I think, you know, if I also, I think I look at it from the point of view, it's, it's still in its kind of price range. It's still one I would probably go over the other outdoor watches, but then I would be going for the Phoenix 7 and, and saving some money because the experience is going to be very similar. So from that point of view, I think, it's a good Phoenix, as you'd expect. The experience has been very, very good. Is it drastically different from using the Phoenix 7? As I said, apart from those kind of hardware things, not really. And those things have, wouldn't, for me, be deal breakers um, overall in terms of going for this over the 7. So for me, I would be going for the 7 still, but I think in terms of what you're getting for the Phoenix 7 Pro, everything you expect from a Phoenix, good battery life, tracking experience, level of features level of training analysis all that is here it's just for me it's you know there's no i, I would be looking at the next phoenix that's coming up because i think that's when you you know as we do with these pro pro models always we sit in between garmin working on bigger things uh for their next phoenix range and i think that's what i would be thinking about i'd be going for the phoenix 7 over the 7 pro personally so there you have it that's been our review of the new garmin phoenix 7 pro we hope you found it helpful and as ever, if you have any questions, hit us up in the comments below. If you're interested in how this watch compares to the other Garmin's, of which there are many, then there is a load of videos on the channel right now that you can check out, and there are more coming soon, head-to-heads with the Phoenix 7, the Epix, all kinds of watches, so check those out. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe also, that really helps us support the channel. And otherwise, we hope to see you again soon on the Run Test. It's been a pleasure to talk to you about this watch. Happy running, everyone.